We'll be singing number 2002 in the faith we sing as our prelude. It's I will call upon the Lord. Please join in singing as you feel called. Welcome to the Rio Rancho United Methodist Church. Please rise as you are able and join us in singing our opening hymn, number 347 in the United Methodist Hymnal, Spirit Song.
morning. How is everyone doing this morning? It's good to see you, but you know the lights are very bright this morning. I'm having a hard time seeing some of you. All right, we have a few announcements today. First of all, we do have a quilt up here on the altar. It is for Donna Root. If you are able to say a prayer, then you tie a knot in one of the strings on the quilt. Once all of the knots are tied, then we can get it to Donna. And if you find that there are no more knots to be tied, there are, because there are never enough prayers. So if all the knots are tied, just tie another one over the top. And that way she'll just know that we just prayed our little hearts out for her. So just be sure and do that. We have started doing fellowship again. So everyone is welcome to join us in the fellowship hall um, right after worship. There'll be some little goodies and snacks and I bet coffee for those of you that drink coffee. So come on and join us, sit and talk, share a little bit of time with us this morning. Book Club is coming up real soon on the 29th of August, which is a Monday. We've kind of changed the date. We normally do the first Monday of every month, but in September, the first Monday is uh, Labor Day. So we are going to talk about our book a week earlier than normal. I just finished it. It was very good. Called Run, Rose, Run by Dolly Parton and James Patterson. If um, you would like to join in the book club, even if you haven't read the book, you are welcome to come and discuss it with us and uh, just join us in the youth room, which is right behind at 1030 in the morning on August 29th. Handbells are going to be starting up soon. And so on September 4th, which isn't this coming Sunday, but the following one. So you have two weeks to think about this. If you want to know a little bit more about handbells, we would love to have you come on the 4th and just learn a little bit about them. Talk to Clay. Clay will introduce you to the bells. Do they all have names? You haven't made up fun names? It might be easier to play them. You never know. Okay. You have to be able to count to eight. Yeah. So, you know, if you want to give handbells a try, I love listening to handbells. So uh, if you want to give that a try, Sunday, September 4th from 1130 to 1230 in the fellowship hall or in the music room? In the music room. This side. All right. Um, let's see. Maxine and Gary Reese. There they are, there they are. They are celebrating their 61st anniversary today. Woo! Congratulations. All 61 years have just been marvelous, right? He said yes, she said she's not so sure. Okay, I would totally agree. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so next week, Sunday, is our tea party. Uh, we are having a tea party fundraiser for the youth group. So we encourage you to get your tiara or your fascinator or your hat. Men can come too. It's not an exclusive women's group. So if men would like to join us, they're welcome. I'd love to see somebody wear a top hat. So we're gonna have a contest about who wears the hat best. So that will be a lot of fun. But it's at four o'clock next Sunday afternoon. Tickets are $15. We will have all the fun, yummy food, some really interesting teas, and of course, games and prizes. So you don't wanna miss it, it's gonna be a blast. It is, it is. And then last but certainly not least, just so you're thinking about it. Have you ever done Christmas in September? No. We hear about Christmas in July. We were really busy in July, so Raquel and I couldn't really get it put together, but we wanted to do some Christmas crafts. And so we're going to do that uh, September 17th, which is a Saturday. 
at 10 a.m. And we're gonna do a couple Christmas crafts and they're really cool. It'll be $10 per person that will cover all the supplies that you will need to make a couple of really neat Christmas crafts. So be thinking about it so you can join in the fun. And then if you would just be sure and tear off the little perforated part of your bulletin and fill in. If you filled this out tons of times, just, just jot down your name. We already probably have your information, but it's important for us to do this so that we still have it for contact tracing. If anybody gets sick and we need to contact people to let them know that somebody sitting near you was sick, um, then we can let you know so you can watch and, and make sure that you don't get sick. So just go ahead and fill this out, drop them in the offering plates, which are all back there now. I can't play stewardess for an airline anymore because all the plates are back there. But we are so glad to see you this morning and I hope everyone has a marvelous day. Oh, wave, say hello. Sorry, Gordon, I'm not on the Please join us in singing number 2025 in the faith we sing as we prepare our hearts for prayer. This is As the Deer. I'm John Hockert, and before we go to the Lord in prayer, I'd like to let you know that Lowell Cole Rust has been hospitalized with a broken leg, and I'm sure he would appreciate our prayers and other signs of compassion. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God of mercy, this day is your welcome gift. We thank you for the ways that you have blessed us with family, friends, opportunities for worship, and opportunities for service. Prepare our hearts for worship, Lord. Help us to slow down, to calm down, be still, and know that you are God. Lord, through the power of your Holy Spirit, touch our hearts with a vision of your grandeur, your power, your glory, and your love for us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may see the world and ourselves as you see us. Open our eyes to those around us who are in need. Fix our gaze upon them and keep us from turning away as we so often do. Help us to see ourselves as we truly are, sinful people, sometimes given to pride, vanity, greed, and selfishness. 
yet loved by you and adopted as your sons and daughters through Christ's sacrifice on the cross. Cleanse us from our sins that we may be pure in heart so that we may be blessed by seeing you. Soften our hearts that we may be moved to show your love to those around us. Dear Lord, we thank you for minds to think, hearts to love, hands to serve, health and strength to work, and for leisure time in which to rest and play. May all our work be done for the common good, may it be done in safety, and may we all be spared from the grinding toil and wasteful idleness that destroys fullness of life. Lord, be with those in leadership positions in our world, our nation, our community, and our church, guiding them in your ways of mercy and peace, that we may live in peace and freedom. Keep our leaders mindful that you will call them to account for their leadership, as you will call us to account for our works. We pray for those risking their lives to keep us safe in the military, law enforcement, firefighting, and emergency rescue. Strengthen them and keep them safe. Strengthen your church by the power of your Holy Spirit, bringing your kingdom and salvation to a world in desperate need. Lord, we pray for those in need here and throughout the world and ask that you would open our ears and hearts so that we might listen when you tell us what we should do to show them your love. Be especially close to those affected by natural disasters, crime, conflicts, and war. Comfort and relieve those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit, and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs. We ask that the ill may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your love and care. Look with love upon the worries and sorrows of those for whom our prayers are offered, both those who na whose names we mention now and those whom we love whose names are unspoken on our hearts. I raise the names of Larry Kasky and Lowell Colrust. Lord, we offer our praises and these requests in the name of your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We loved hearing you sing our prelude, Call to Prayer. We always love hearing you sing, so please feel free to join us as we sing our anthem, Start a Fire.
Our scripture this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 8 through 13. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I have a container of water here. Now this is not your average, everyday water. Look at it. See, you, look, they even have it up there, okay? It is water, it is water. So, what kind of water could this be? It's not your typical water. And at the count of three, I just want you to, to say out loud, what type of water you think this is. Ready? One, two, three. That was very good. I have no idea what you said, but I don't. <laughs> but it is not water from the Jordan River or water from my kitchen sink. I am honored to present to you water from is Letta Lake. You guys aren't impressed? <laughs> yep, it's Letta Lake water. Went down there and got down there on the edge and just filled this up. It is. If you're not familiar with Isleta Lake, it's by Isleta Pueblo just off of I-25 and they have fishing and golfing and swimming and RV sites. We took Riley and Taylor there one year to go fishing. And so we stopped and we got Barbie poles. And we told the girls, okay, now hold the pole. And if you feel a tug, if you feel a tug on your pole, sit down. Sit down, hold on tight, and then call Daddy or Hustine. You got it? Yeah, they got it. Taylor got a bite. And what should she do? Did she sit down? No. Did she call Daddy or Hostine? No. She screamed, let go of the pole, and ran up the bank. <laughs> then she really cried as she watched her little Barbie pole go down under the water. <laughs> if you have never been to Esleta Lake, or it has been quite a while, I'm so glad to, to show this to you. This is Isleta Lake. Okay, now you may be thinking, no, it's not really Isleta Lake. Yes, it is. I, I, I will agree it's not all of Isleta Lake, but it's all Isleta Lake. All of Isleta Lake would not fit in this container. But every molecule of water in this bottle is Isleta Lake. Inside here is 100% unadulterated, undiluted, no additives, no preservatives, Isleta Lake. It's all Isleta Lake. I'm using this to introduce the series, The Ghost Stories, and we're studying about the Holy Ghost or what we normally call the Holy Spirit. We have talked about if you repent of your sins or are baptized into Jesus Christ, you will have the Holy Spirit inside you. Now, do you have 
all of God in you? No. There's plenty of God to go around, but what you do have inside is all God. Pure, unadulterated, high-octane God in you. Paul says it this way. Don't you know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? Remember, God doesn't live in temples built by humans. He doesn't live in this sanctuary. The Bible says he lives in you. When God gets in you by the presence of his Holy Spirit, there is always going to be power evidenced in your life. Athletes understand this. Whatever your sport, you're always looking for that extra power, that competitive edge so you can excel and maybe win. As Christians, we actually believe Holy Spirit is like that competitive edge which God gives us. Holy Spirit can be inside of us so we can prevail in our Christian life, so we can win in our Christian life. Whenever you read the Bible and find the Holy Spirit coming upon someone or in someone, there is always power. Always. So let's look at a couple places where Holy Spirit gives his power. Judges 14.6, Samson. The Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him, so he tore the lion apart with his bare hands as he might a young goat. But he told neither his father or his mother what he had done. That's probably a good thing. You know, I mean, how often do you want to tell your parents you were tearing animals apart? Especially your mom. Moms worry. Okay. In, in 1 Samuel 16, 13, Samuel is anointing David. And there was power. Isaiah 11:12 prophecy about Jesus when he comes there will be counsel understanding and power Luke 135 the angel is with Mary she's getting ready to have the baby and is told the Holy Spirit will come up on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you Luke 4:14 4, Jesus He's just beginning his ministry, and he's returning to Galilee, and Scripture says he is coming to them in the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.8. Followers of Jesus. Jesus tells his disciples they will receive power, and they will be his witnesses in Judea, Samaria, and all the ends of the earth. 1 Corinthians 2.4. Paul is speaking about his ministry and his preaching. He said his preaching was not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. And in 2 Timothy 1.7, Paul is speaking to Christians. For the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. The Holy Spirit equals power in your life. When you get God in you, there is power in you. So here's the question. In what ways should a person expect the Holy Spirit to display or dispense his power? What evidences should there be in a Christian's life that the power of God is inside of them? I want to share a couple of those things with you today. So things you can expect as evidence God is in your life. First one is, the Holy Spirit gives believers the power to speak and lead boldly. When I was, when I was a kid in grade school, there was another child on our block. She was an okay kid until her brother came around. When her brother was around, she would say whatever she wanted, no matter how mean or crude it was. She would just start talking and then she wouldn't shut up. And she was so bold. She would tell if you had a crush on someone at school, 
if you got in trouble at home or in school, if you were having a fight with your brother, and she would get away with it every time because her brother was there, ready to defend her, whisk her away, or take her side. She could say anything. She could do anything because she knew her brother was with her. I wanted to get a, a shot of a kid with a great big giant shadow behind him, but you had to buy it, so I chose this instead. <laughs> when you know who is with you, it gives you a holy boldness. It gives you power. We just heard from the, the reading of the book of Acts 4, Peter has been preaching, and he's getting pretty bold. In fact, Peter and some of his buddies had just healed a guy who'd been crippled for a long time. And Peter's been stirring things up, so he gets arrested. He gets arrested for talking about Jesus and healing this guy. So he's brought before the leaders, and the Holy Spirit comes upon Peter and allows him to speak. Peter and John had been traveling with Jesus for the past few years, but right now Jesus has ascended and is gone. Scripture tells us Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit so he could speak and lead boldly. Do you ever feel you need the power to speak boldly, to lead boldly with your boss at work or maybe with a family member? I want to remind you, Holy Spirit can and will give you the ability to speak boldly when you need to do it. Know that it is there for you and you can rely on it. Sometimes you, when you speak boldly, it can get you in trouble and lead to some suffering. Thankfully, the second thing the Holy Spirit does is he gives believers the power to endure suffering and pain. This is one of the primary purposes of the Holy Spirit, to come alongside us when we are hurting, when we are grieving, or when we need help. Again, in the Bible, Acts 6, the church is growing rapidly. And the 12 disciples Jesus had sent to the church that can't handle it anymore. Is there too many people and too many things to attend to? So they choose seven more men to help them out. And one of the seven is a man named Stephen. In Acts 6, Stephen immediately starts preaching and doing miraculous things. But in Acts 7, Stephen also gets arrested. Others had lied about him. Our scripture tells us he was brought before the religious leaders and he preaches a bold message just like Peter did. Peter is released and told, do not preach anymore. Stephen, he's not released. After he had finished preaching, listen to the response of the leaders. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, the, the message they had just finished, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. I sincerely doubt if anyone is going to be dragged out of the city and get stoned. But we all experience pain and suffering in our lives because that's part of being human. I received a, a phone call eight days ago. A young woman called to tell me her father had passed. 
He got a diagnosis and he was in the hospital, but he chose to go home. He left the hospital on Monday and on Saturday he died right after she had read the 23rd Psalm to him and they had prayed the Lord's Prayer together. Another family in our congregation is facing cancer. They're suffering, they're hurting. Yet Holy Spirit is working in both these families, allowing them to, to go through the suffering and pain, surrounded by people who love them and care for them and help them as they move through these circumstances. Or, or what about the guy who's worked for the same company for decades, and now in their dan downsizing, he doesn't have a job? Anger, frustration, fear. Yet because he is a believer, he has Holy Spirit to help him through these emotions and eventually see the other side of his darkness. Or, or think about our young kids who, who want to live the right way, live their biblical-based convictions, and what do they receive at school? Ridicule, temptations, derision. Your, your parents, your parents won't know if you come to this party. Go ahead, come on. Everybody cheats, and you won't have to worry about your grades. It's just one drink. It is the Holy Spirit in their life which helps them get through some of these difficult times in their lives. So if you're feeling like the world is getting you down, your family situation is getting you down, or your job is getting you down, Holy Spirit in you can help you get through these times of pain and suffering as one of the primary purposes of the Holy Spirit. The third job is Holy Spirit gives believers understanding, specifically to the truth of God's word. Earlier we heard what the Spirit does in regards to the truth of God's word. And listen to how Paul explains the Holy Spirit's actions in this regard. This is what is meant by the scriptures which say that no mere man has ever seen, heard, or even imagined what wonderful things God has ready for those who love the Lord. But we know about these things because God has sent his spirit to tell us. And his spirit searches out and shows us all of God's deepest secrets. No one can really know what anyone else is thinking or what he is really like except the person himself. And no one can know God's thoughts except through God's own spirit. And God has actually given us his spirit, not the world's spirit, to tell us about the wonderful free gifts of grace and blessing God has given us. In telling you about these gifts, we have even used some, the very words given to us by the Holy Spirit, not words that we might choose. So we may use the Holy Spirit's words to explain the Holy Spirit's facts. But the man who isn't a Christian can't understand and can't accept these thoughts from God, which the Holy Spirit teaches us. They sound foolish to him. Because only those who have the Holy Spirit within them can understand what the Holy Spirit means. Others just can't take it in. But the spiritual man has insight into everything, and that bothers and baffles the man of the world who can't understand him at all. And that's from um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 15 in the Living Bible. Okay, that's a pretty big chunk of scripture and it's saying that the Bible is written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God. If you understand the truth in this book, the evidence that is evidence of God's Spirit in you. I, I can remember when I first became a Christian, I, 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 I heard that. 
And the people at the church told me that. I was so excited. I went home and I thought, oh, I'm going to understand this. I, I, I must have read Genesis 1 through 3 16 times. And, you know, there were no light bulbs. So I was a little disappointed. I was a little disappointed. But that's okay. I want to be as clear as I can. As I am teaching today, if you suddenly get it, if all of a sudden you, you really understand this stuff about Peter and Stephen and it makes sense to you, it's not because I am smart. It's not because I have chosen exactly the right words or have the best examples or stories. That is evidence of the Holy Spirit in you. One of the most powerful purposes of Holy Spirit is to help you understand God's word. You must have the spirit of God to understand the truths of God. And, and this is not, that's just not my opinion. That's what we just read in, in 2 Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. You must have the spirit of God to understand the truths of God. Some of you may be sitting there thinking, well, I, I understand your words, Raquel. Uh, I've been keeping up with the points that you're making. I'm not sure Holy Spirit lives in me, but I'm keeping up. What else is there? Here's my answer. You may grasp the information, but you won't experience the transformation. Make sense? You might cognitively understand the information, but you won't experience transformation in your life. The truth of the Bible is, is far more than just hearing it on Sunday morning. It's living it out on Monday. It's pretty easy to come to church and, and hear the word of God on Sunday, but to live it out on Monday? It's difficult, as we talked about last week. I cannot, you cannot do this on your own. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. It requires more than understanding. It requires empowerment to actually live it out. And according to the Bible, that is what Holy Spirit does. Not only do you understand, you have the power to live it. The fourth and final gift of Holy Spirit gives to believers, he gives leadings and promptings. If you're a Christian, believe in Jesus and have given your life to him, you have little promptings in your life. God lives in you and the Bible is clear. When God lives in you, he whispers to people's hearts. Have you ever felt God nudging you? Ever felt like God is, is prompting you or leading you towards something? I, I recognize promptings from God are kind of mysterious and mystical. I, I'm not sure where they fit into your theology, but, it, but doesn't it seem true if God has decided to live inside us, not all of God, but it's all God, if God lives inside of us, the presence of in the presence of the Holy Spirit, he will also give us promptings in our lives. He'll give us leadings and nudgings and speak to our hearts. I have stories of these nudges in my own life. Some of them good because I followed through. Others, no, because I ignored them. But one of my favorite stories is from Lee Strobel. I first heard um, Lee Strobel when I attended a, a training at Willow Creek in uh, Willow Creek Community Church in Illinois, one of those first mega churches. Lee was an award-winning investigative journalist for the Tribune, Chicago Tribune. At one point, he left the Tribune and went to work for another paper in Chicago. And after his move, he met some people. He became a Christian, quit journalism, and joined the staff at Willow Creek, and has written several books. 
After his move to the other paper, Lee felt he needed to go back to the Tribune, not to work, but to witness to his faith to a friend there, someone he needed to tell about how his life had changed since he had accepted God into his life and to, and to tell this person what Jesus was doing in his life. He, he explains he just could not escape this nudging. He felt like God was really pushing him. So one day he left early and went to the Tribune and found his friend in his cubicle. The space around the cubicle was chaotic. They were in the middle of an update, and this, so people were everywhere. Noise, activity. Lee thought, well, I'm here. I might as well go for it. So he spends 30 to 40 minutes sharing what God was doing in his life. After pouring out his heart, he looks across the table, and his friend was completely unmoved. He didn't get it. He didn't understand. Didn't know why this was such a big deal. Lee thanked him for his time, departed, saying, well, we'll see you later, and he left. Got out on the street and looks heavenward and said, so what was that all about? I thought I was listening to your voice. I thought you were the one telling me to go. Was it really you, or did I just get some bad green chili? Several months later, Lee is at church, and this guy came up to him and said, Are you Lee Strobel? Yeah, I'm Lee Strobel. Then the guy says, I just want to thank you for sharing Jesus with me. Lee looked at him puzzled and said, I, I don't think we've ever met. The guy responded, Well, a few months ago, you came into the Chicago Tribune. You sat down in a, a cubicle of a, with a person I assume you know, and in the midst of the construction noise, you began to talk to him in a loud voice. What you don't know is I was about 15 to 20 feet behind you. I was laying tile. As you began to speak, I listened to every single word you said. Later that night, I went home fell on my knees, and I accepted Jesus into my life. Thank you for sharing Jesus with me. Listen, there is power. When you and I obey the promptings of God in our lives, when it, when it comes to nudgings and promptings, there is no, there's no differentiation between big and little. Who are we to say the, move, the moment that we become involved is big or small? We can't see the future. We have no idea the scope of our momentary obedience in the grand plan of God. I can promise there is power in obeying the promptings of God. Don't you want to be a part of, of a Holy Spirit-prompted church? That's what I want to be part of, to be be part of and to help lead. So here's the takeaway for today, the action point, what I want you to take home with you. Obey one leading of prompting from the Holy Spirit this week. Listen, follow God's leading or prompting in your life this week. It may be big in, in your eyes or it may be small. It could be as easy as sending someone an email or a text, and the response is, you know what, I really needed to hear this. I'm at the bottom of my life, and I would like to talk. It could be perfect timing. You, you never know. It could be buying a, a $20 or $30 gift card to Smith's for groceries and giving it to someone. I, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm thinking you might need it. Or it could be bigger, and you're thinking, ooh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what God might be prompting you to do. I'm just asking you to be aware of the Spirit's nudgings and promptings, and God is calling you to do this week. Or it could be you're being prompted to become involved at Rio Rancho United Methodist Church. 
a ministry you might be interested in. God may be nudging you to step up and commit. Maybe just being a part of a church is what you need for your family, your marriage, or the stability of belonging to a Bible-based church. God is calling you to be a part of this church. Just, just give it a shot. I'm going to see what it means to be a part of a place like this. And you come next week. Whatever it is, big, small, follow through on the prompting. And, and don't forget this visual. If you have accepted Jesus in your life, you have God in you. Not all of God, but it's all God. 100% undiluted, high-octane God, and it's always power. Let us pray. Creator, thank you. Thank you for today, and thank you for the opportunity we have to spend time singing and studying the Bible. I thank you how you show us how you work in our lives through your word. We don't need to guess or wonder what you're up to. You, you can make it pretty clear to us. I pray we would all be more sensitive to your leading in our lives, whether this is new or through a whole walk with you, Make us more aware of your presence and your power. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please rise as you are able and join us in singing our closing hymn, number 2237, in the faith we sing, As a Fire is Meant for Burning. Fourth, expectantly, listening, obeying that nudge. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. I would remind you we have some snacks in Fellowship Hall. <laughs>